what Black Panther Wakanda Forever means for the future of the MCU. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is finally in theaters, and that means we can now bid a fond farewell to Marvel's Phase 4. It was a strange, uneven phase in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as the world reeled from the aftermath of Endgame recovering from the blip, while Marvel expanded into the wild world of television. And while Wakanda Forever's macro focus was primarily on a battle between two secretive nations, the film could have major effects on the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and those effects specifically have major ramifications for Ironheart, Captain America New World Order, Armor Wars, and Thunderbolts. We're going to break it all down for you in just a moment, but to do so we have to spoil what happens in Wakanda Forever. So if you haven't seen the latest Black Panther yet and you're worried about spoilers, now's your chance to leave. No! <laughs> Okay, let's get into it, shall we? By the end of Wakanda Forever, the hierarchy of power in the Marvel Cinematic Universe has changed. World governments are increasingly trying to get their mitts on Vibranium, Talokan's Veil of Secrecy has been pierced, Riri Williams is returning to college fully capable of making Stark tech, and there's a brand new Black Panther in town. Although many of us are still on Kang Watch waiting to see how the Conqueror hatches his master plan in Quantumania, there are still major threats looming on Earth-616 or 199999 or whatever you want to call it. While Namor's undeniably a deadly foe, he's currently busy licking his wounds and regrowing some foot feathers. The bigger threat to Earth's Mightiest Heroes right now is Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. She isn't just Everett Ross's ex, she's the deputy director of the CIA. Having bugged the Kamoyo beads that Ross found, she not only had Ross arrested for treason, but has her sights firmly set on acquiring vibranium for the US government. And there are multiple ways she could go about doing this. She knows about the existence of Talo Khan, she knows that Riri Williams was capable of creating a vibranium detector, and potentially that there are other deposits of vibranium out there, as Namor mentioned. In short, it's only a matter of time until Val manages to acquire the world's most valuable metal. And this plays into larger themes of Marvel's Phase 4 that we've mentioned before. It was a phase about seeking a sense of control in a world full of people with godlike powers. How do you defend yourself as an average person when a CrossFit California Raisin is capable of killing half the universe with six Moncala beads in a snap of his fingers? Now, we've seen government agencies like Damage Control transform from cleanup crew and repository for dangerous technology into an increasingly militarized police force targeting enhanced individuals. With their access to Stark Industries tech, they're using drones to track and hunt down people like Kamala Khan on Ms. Marvel. They deployed heavily armed units to stop Jen Walters on She-Hulk, and they've also built Supermax prisons to contain those who they deem to be too dangerous to be on the streets, although those have proven surprisingly porous. And this is to say nothing of the Ultron parts chilling in Damage Control's vault that we saw back in Spider-Man Homecoming. And this puts Ramonda's comments about the dangers of AI into sharp relief. Sure, he might be smart enough to avoid Tony Stark's mistakes that led to Ultron, but what about people willing to cut even more corners? Something tells me those particular murder bots won't be quite as docile as the Illuminati's Ultron sentries in Multiverse of Madness. With the prospect of Stark technology and Vibranium falling into the wrong hands, or at least the hands of people that want to weaponize them, the MCU is about to face some major threats in their current reality as well as across the multiverse. Let's start with Ironheart, which producers confirmed will be a direct continuation of the events of Wakanda Forever. We know that Riri Williams will be returning to MIT to continue her studies and potentially her side hustle of doing other students' homework. After all, her original prototype armor got pretty badly damaged in building a suit of armor worthy of Tony Stark? That ain't cheap. More importantly, as we've mentioned, Riri will have a giant target on her back from all sorts of shadowy figures. Specifically, people that want vibranium and people who want engineers capable of figuring out how to replicate that old Tony Stark magic now that he's gone. We also know that the Hood is said to be the big bad of the series, but if Mephisto really is involved in this show like the rumors have speculated, shut up, I know, then maybe Riri could make a deal with the devil that leads to Stark tech being made available for mass consumption. And that in turn could lead to one hell of a headache for Rhodey in Armor Wars. And speaking of Armor Wars, it is the biggest question mark in the MCU lineup right now after it was shifted from a Disney Plus series to a movie. But much like the comic storyline on which it's based, the movie will revolve around the misuse of Stark Industries technology in Tony's absence. Now remember how cool the Iron Legion scene was in Iron Man 3? Now imagine if Justin Hammer and company were the ones piloting said suits of armor. 
While Riri might inadvertently enable the events of this movie, she's also going to be pivotal in helping to stop them. Of course, a world with Iron Man suits run amok isn't the only New World Order coming to the MCU. Captain America New World Order will feature Harrison Ford as General Thunderbolt Ross and Tim Blake Nelson as Samuel Stearns, aka the leader. They clearly have a score to settle with the world's superhero population, especially the Hulk. Ross has not only arrested half the Avengers before, but he also basically created the Abomination in his dogged attempts to recreate the Super Soldier Serum. And now he'll likely have started testing on himself to become the Red Hulk with the assistance of the leader. In She-Hulk, Intelligentsia turned out to be a bit of a red herring, but the leader was one half of the equation that helped turn Roz into the Red Hulk in the comics alongside MODOK, who's rumored to be appearing in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as well. Now, if the current U.S. president in the MCU, President Ritson, winds up being a scroll during Secret Invasion, that could pave the way for someone like Ross to step into the nation's highest office. And that would get doubly terrifying if he was secretly a Hulk as well. Plus, if the U.S. is able to get access to Vibranium like Val said she wanted, then this could perhaps lead to the creation of additional alloys like Adamantium as well. And if there are more Hulks running around all of a sudden, other outfits like Damage Control and the eventual Thunderbolts team will have even more reason than ever to respond to threats ranging from the Avengers to Talokan to Wakanda with extreme prejudice. Now, speaking of the Thunderbolts, this is the logical end point of Val's story arc. We've seen her recruiting people like John Walker and Yelena Belova to join this shadowy supergroup. And we know the rest of this team will be comprised of other villains or questionably heroic characters from across the MCU's rogues gallery. And this has the chance to be Marvel's answer to the Suicide Squad, albeit with a probably lower body count. But getting access to Vibranium could give this team the technological advantage, especially now that the Avengers seem to be disbanded for the time being. And if Ross is President or Secretary of State, it makes sense that he would help fast track getting his own private Avengers squad all the resources they need, and also why they'd call them the Thunderbolts in his honor. Of course, all of this is speculation for the time being, and we're still keeping our fingers crossed for other speculatory theories like damage control building Sentinels based on Swords Project Cataract research from WandaVision. And this is to say nothing of secret wars and incursion events, which will be a looming threat for the entire Marvel multiverse. Now, those who read the comics know that Namor played a pivotal role in the lead up to Secret Wars. He helped lead a team of villains known as the Cabal who were willing to destroy entire other universes to preserve their own. For now, though, we can all agree that Kang isn't the only threat to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially in the wake of Wakanda Forever. This is wild. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's how we see the ripple effects of Wakanda Forever playing out over phase five of the MCU. We'll have even more deep dives in the days ahead over on Nerdist, but for now, tell us what did you think of this movie? How do you think Wakanda Forever will affect phase five and beyond? Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Thank <laughs> you.